In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Discuss the journal entry related to paying payroll tax liabilities. So we're talking about a payroll journal entry, and we can kind of think of the payroll journal entries as a few different components to them. Uh, I'm going to list basically three payroll journal entries. There could be more, uh, but I'll give I'll give the three and try to give a distinction of where we are focusing here. It's important to note that the payroll journal entries are usually some of the more complex journal entries. Very good practice to learn payroll journal entries and journal entries that most don't understand. So if we have an understanding of the payroll journal entries, um, they really help us just to understand how to record normal journal entries. And again, you probably uh, know more from basically just how to record journal entries and from recording payroll than many individuals. And also even people that are working in payroll. When we work in payroll, we often are so concentrated on tables and uh, making sure that the tables are correct in terms of a register and whatnot and calculating the taxes that we we don't spend as much time or people specialize in creating the tables and and don't and possibly the journal entries might be a, a separate type of thing to many people in, in other words so it's really good to know uh, the payroll journal entry so that we can record the payroll journal entry and know how it, how it is happening it will be necessary to to get the payroll journalized into our records in some format even if we are outsourcing payroll so we still need to get the information into our records the most basic way to do that or the most general way to do that would be with it with a payroll just one payroll journal entry to record that a more detailed way would would be to, to get all the data related to each individual uh, register and each individual check but in any case whether we do the payroll in-house or whether we do it out of house, whether we do it in our accounting department or we outsource it to some contractor such as uh, Paychex or ADP or somebody, uh, we still need to get it into our system some way, be able to interpret it once there, and therefore need to understand payroll journal entries. So this payroll journal entry is talking about uh, the pain of the liability. So I would think of the payroll in kind of three steps at least. Uh, one would be recording the employee li the employee uh, expense. That would be the main journal entry that would be focused in on the register, the calculation on the register of net income, uh, meaning gross income minus all of the all of the stuff, all the uh, withholdings to get to net income. And then there's going to be a journal entry related to the employer taxes, uh, which would be just the employer portions, which would be employer FUTA, uh, well, all of FUTA's employer, but it would be Social Security employer, it would be Medicare employer portion, and then FUTA would be recorded as components of the employer taxes. And then at some point in the future, once we've recorded the liabilities related to the employee taxes and the employer taxes would now be recorded as liabilities, something that we then owe. We would then need to pay them uh, periodically, and, and uh, that's where we are concentrating in on now, paying off the liabilities that have already been put in place once we record the payroll process and therefore owe uh, liabilities related to uh, the, the employer and employee portion of payroll taxes. Now, when, when do we actually pay the liabilities could differ depending on um, what our payroll circumstances are, meaning the requirements for payments, typically we have to pay more frequently the more our payroll is, the higher dollar amount our payroll is and the more employees we have. So we'll have to pay it, of course, at some point after the payroll happens, uh, to, we'll have to pay the liabilities, but when do we have to pay them could differ. Now, in terms of the liabilities, there could be, you know, I mean, in terms of the journal entries, there could be, you know, more journal entries based on, uh, like we could transfer money from a checking account to uh, the payroll account before we do the journal entries. And we could have a journal entry that uh, processes the payroll uh, at a separate time and then we pay it later. So the, the journal, the three that we talked about is kind of a summary of the, of the main big journal entries we would think of for the for recording the payroll so at this point in time we're actually paying the payroll so that means if we imagine and it's always nice to be able to envision and imagine the trial balance we would think that there's going to be liabilities on it related to payroll taxes 
due to the processing of the payroll, both employee and employer portion. In other words, we should have on the trial balance the fact that we owe federal income tax for both employee and employer portion as a liability account. We should have on the trial balance the fact that we have Medicare tax for the employee and employer portion, a liability with a credit balance. Then we have the FUTA tax, which is only going to be the employer portion because there is no employee portion that we owe a liability. And then we have the federal income tax, which represents only the employee portion that uh, we pulled from the paycheck. It's just going to be the employee portion of uh, taxes that we will owe. So federal income tax, Social Security, Medicare, uh, and FUTA are going to be included in the taxes we owe. When we make the journal entry, it's pretty straightforward. It's just like it's just like an account's payable. It's just like any payable account that became due. We're just going to make the payable account go to zero and pay it off. It's just like if we paid off a credit card, if we bought supplies on a credit card or on credit on account, we would buy the supplies for $100 and we would debit supplies. We would credit payroll. We would credit not payroll. We would credit accounts payable, a liability. And then later on, we would pay it with cash, crediting cash, debiting the payable to make it go back down to zero. Same thing is happening here. These liabilities are a result of something you know that happened. We had employees work for us, and therefore and they incurred payroll liabilities, and we did. And now we're paying off the obligation that we owe. That obligation representing money that was taken out of the employee's paycheck and money that we owe just for payroll taxes for being able to have employees. So all those liability accounts we listed then need to go down. They're all liability accounts, so we're going to make them go down by doing the opposite thing too that has their normal balance, which in this case is a debit. So we will debit the liability accounts of federal income tax payable, uh, Medicare tax payable, Social Security tax payable, FUTA tax payable for whatever we owe. And then we're going to credit, of course, cash. So we're going to credit the cash, the actual payment that will be coming out of our checking account. Uh, note that if we were actually going to write the checks, we may have to break out the, the payments that we have depending on whatever regulations we have. So this is basically just a general journal entry that would be reducing all payable accounts. We might have to, to group together, say, Social Security, Medicare, and FIT, and maybe, maybe uh, FUTA, we break out separately. But in any case, uh, whether it be one journal entry or two, we're going to debit all of the liability accounts down to zero for whatever we owe, and we're going to credit the cash for the amount that we pay. The result, if we post this to the financial statements, would be the liabilities decreasing to zero for federal income tax for the for the employee for the you know, payroll taxes and the um, the Social Security and Medicare employee and employer going down to zero uh, and the FUTA going down to zero if we're paying off all taxes basically owed for the prior pay period. And then uh, cash would be going down by, uh, by the amount owed uh, for those payroll taxes. The effect on the uh, income statement is none. So just like if we paid off the accounts payable, we're only paying off liabilities the effect on the income statement, uh, including the, uh, are, are already there because they happened when payroll was processed. They happened when we recorded the employee payroll expense and the employee payroll tax expense or the employer tax expense. End simulation! End the simulation!